All right, how's it going, y'all? Today we're gonna to be going over the top eight features and applications in Synology DSM-7 for home users. These are all things that just a lot of people can get a lot of use out of from their NAS that they might not have even realized it can do. It's all around DSM-7, though most of this is gonna be applicable also to previous DSM models, but everything here is available in DSM-7 and a couple things have been updated since DSM-6. The other thing is, this is not an exhaustive list whatsoever. These are just a bunch of features and applications that I would really recommend looking at. I'm not saying you should use all of them, but you should probably at least think about it. And so first off, number zero, I'm not even really gonna count this, is SMB. SMB is how you should be accessing files from your NAS anytime you're at home. Whether you're on a Windows, Mac, or a Linux PC, it doesn't matter, you should be using SMB to just access your raw files. It is so much easier, and it allows you to access all the files on your Synology from Finder if you're on a Mac, or Windows File Explorer for Windows PCs. And so it's just so much easier. I've got a video on that. I'll leave a link to it in the description below, but that's really how you should be accessing your files. I've seen a lot of people using FileStation, basically just downloading and uploading stuff like Google Drive, when really you don't have to do that. A NAS is great because it's network storage. You don't have to go through DSM every time you wanna look at a file. All right, so now with that out of the way, let's go to the real list and let's start off with number one, which is a hyper backup. Even if you're a home user, you need to be backing up your files. SHR and RAID are not backups. They are just a safety net, but it doesn't matter if you accidentally delete a file, your NAS get cryptoed, or anything like that. They're not going to protect you from things like that. If you delete a file, it deletes it from all the disks. No redundancy helps you with that. And so that's why it's really important to have a backup. You don't have to back up all your files. You really just need to make sure to find those core files, probably your family's photos, your tax documents, everything like that, and you need to get those backed up off-site. I've got a video that goes over all the different options for home users on this. I'll leave a link to the description below, but really make sure to use Hyper Backup and back up your files somewhere. It is a great application that makes backing up your NAS incredibly easy. You can just go in and you can choose all of these different things to send your backups to, and it just does a great job with it. It really protects you from so many different types of data loss, and it's not that expensive, especially if you just find those 100 gigs of photos, important documents, and everything like that. Those probably do not take up that much space. If you can make sure that those are always backed up, you will sleep better at night, and if the worst happens, you'll be okay. And so really make sure you're backing up your data because you do not want to lose all of the files that are on your NAS. All right, and so now number two is Synology Photos. So in DSM-6, Photos was really two different apps. There was PhotoStation and Moments. Moments was for the iPhone shooter. PhotoStation was for the photographer with a DSLR who's running Lightroom and then exporting. What they did in DSM-7 is they combined these two features together into one app called Synology Photos. And personally, I love it. But at the same time, I'm coming from the DSLR shooter exporting out of Lightroom and I've already got my file structure set up and everything like that. So it is great for me. I got all the benefits of Moments while also being able to completely have control over how my file structure is, how I import everything, how I even access the files. Now I can just say, okay, now show me all the images that I took at F1.7. We'll just go ahead and open up here. And you can see it's got a beautiful interface and it just really easily allows you to see everything. It automatically looks at your metadata if it's got GPS tagging and it'll say where it is. It is really looking at Google Photos and iPhone Photos and trying to copy them and they've done a really good job. One thing they are not going to be as good at is all the AI face recognition, animal recognition stuff. Personally, that is not that important to me. I don't care about object detection. I really don't care too much about finding people's faces. It's a nice feature to have, but personally, I've really never found a use for it too often. It's nice on my iPhone photos to be able to search for that, but for my DSLR photos, I've already got metadata in there, and that's how I work. But that's just my opinion. It's got a great user interface where you can share files between people. You can just do so much stuff. And these are massive files that it loads instantly because it automatically makes previews. Then you can download the full resolution and just get so much information about it. So if you look right here, this is a 30 megapixel file that was loaded instantly because it has a small preview. And so we can just see it. We can still zoom in and get all this information out of there and you can see all the detail that's actually in there. 
It does a really good job. It's got all the different tags in there from my Lightroom export. It's got the geolocation. It says where it is. It does such a great job. And it's got this metadata. You can even go into more and it just dumps all the XF data right to here, which is absolutely an awesome feature. And so that is a great feature to have and it allows you to also import your photos from iPhone or Google really easily and just have them all in here. It can also serve as a backup. I really like this application and it just makes managing photos so much easier. I'm actually planning on really rebuilding my entire NAS and fixing everything just so I can make sure I get this access so well and be able to share photos with your significant other super easily without taking up a ton of storage on your phone. For me, I ended up just really eating up into my phone storage because I set it up where I would automatically export all my files out of Lightroom. Obviously, I would compress them down, make them smaller, but still they were huge file sizes compared to iPhone photos. And it really just became a huge pain. Instead, now I'm just gonna pull all those files out of my iPhone photos and instead put them in here. This way I've got massive storage that is free because I'm hosting it at my house and I can still access the full resolution files if I need to. I'm really excited about this feature and I really like it. All right, and so now on to number three is gonna be Quick Connect. And so Quick Connect is one feature where I really would not turn it on unless you need it, but if you need it, it's a great solution compared to port forwarding. So Quick Connect pretty much allows you to access your NAS from wherever you are in the world over the internet. And it also does it automatically for you, sets up everything for you, and makes it really easy. Now, anytime you open up your NAS to the internet, you're going to have security vulnerabilities. Fundamentally, that is just how it is. I've talked about this in a few different videos that I can link down in the description below, but you need to make sure, if you're going to be using Quick Connect, that you have strong user passwords. That's going to be the number one thing, because now people can start password guessing. The reason I actually really recommend Quick Connect over doing port forwarding or anything like that, because for new users, Quick Connect does everything securely. It's not going to open up bad ports that you should not be opening up, and it's all through their relay services. If you don't have a router that supports Quick Connect and your ISP doesn't give you an IP address, you can still use Quick Connect because it's going through Synology's relay servers. It does a nice job of giving you the external access while also being secure, especially if you don't know a ton. And so you know if you enable Quick Connect, it's not going to open up a bad port that is going to leave your entire device vulnerable. So Quick Connect, I actually really enjoy setting up for people who don't know a ton of what they're doing and make sure they have strong passwords, but it is still a security vulnerability. If you don't need external access, don't set it up. And setting it up is incredibly easy. You just go into Control Panel, External Access, and click Enable Quick Connect. And then anytime you need to hit your NAS, you can just go to quickconnect.2 and slash the whatever Quick Connect ID you set up here, and it will connect you to DSM. It also allows you to connect to Photos, Synology Drive, and so many of these other features that I'm gonna talk about here, and it really just makes it super easy to use. I've got a video on how to do this, I'll leave a link in the description below. But overall, Quick Connect is a great choice for people who want external access to their NAS, but don't have a ton of tech experience and don't really understand what port forwarding is. All right, and so now onto number four is gonna be Synology Drive. Synology Drive is one of my favorite features that Synologies have because it just makes syncing files so easily. Pretty much think of Synology Drive just like Dropbox and Google Drive. It is really set up to allow you to easily sync folders from your computer to Synology Drive and also really share links outside of your network to people who you want to be able to have files. It also in DSM-7 got a huge update where you now can see exactly what links are being shared, when they're being accessed and everything like that. So if you notice a file is being hit a lot of times by some IP addresses you don't understand, you can start going through and figuring out what's going on and it just gives you much better control over what is going on. Synology Drive also has a great client. So what you can do right here is you can just open it up and actually start syncing anything you want from your computer to the Synology, just like Google Drive does, or Dropbox, where if you update it in one place, it'll update it on the NAS, and it'll also update it in all the other places. It also works great with Teams. So you can have entire Teams doing the exact same thing, which is great for smaller files. In Windows, you can actually choose which files to sync from Synology Drive. So you can say, okay, I only wanna sync files that I'm using, 
but otherwise delete them from my local hard drive and only re-download them when I need to open them. Unfortunately, this is not a feature in macOS because of security. macOS will not give them that, but there is talk of maybe it becoming a thing in 2022, though I think they may have backed that off because I don't think Apple is going to allow them to use the protocol that they need to. And so Synology Drive just does a super easy job of syncing files. All right, and so now onto number five is going to be active backup for business. Once again, on the backup trend, and even though this is a personal list for home users, Active Backup for Business is still invaluable of a tool, and it's one of my favorite Synology apps because it just makes backing everything up so easily. Actually, when I talk to people about one of the benefits of a Synology over any other NAS solution is really their backup applications. Synology has absolutely phenomenal backup applications that allow you to really easily back up the NAS itself and also back up PCs, servers, and everything like that directly to the NAS, and it's just got some really great features. So Active Backup for Business allows you to back up actual PCs incredibly well. It allows you to do what's called a bare metal restore. That means that you can basically throw the hard drive out a window, plug in a USB stick into a computer with a new hard drive, and it will automatically rebuild that entire operating system as if it was the exact same hard drive that you threw out the window. It's an awesome feature and just gives you so many options to go down here. This is a feature that does require more modern CPUs, so not everything supports it, and it also requires BTRFS to be enabled on the drive share. It is a great feature because it also has deduplication, so if you're backing up five PCs, you are going to have a credible deduplication ratio because the Windows operating system is just gonna go, oh, well, I've already seen that before. I don't need to re-download everything. It is just going to do a really good job of it, and I love it. I've been really impressed by it, and I'm really excited for the day that I'll be able to back up my Mac using Active Backup for Business over Time Machine. You can also back up things like a file server and a physical server, which is absolutely awesome. You can back up a physical server, then if that server dies, you can actually fail it over as a virtual machine through your Synology. This is an incredible feature for businesses, but it's still pretty cool for home users, even though you probably don't have a ton of use for it. I'm just really impressed by this application, and they've made a lot of updates to it in DSM 7. All right, and so now onto number six is going to be snapshot replication. This once again does require a BTRFS volume on your Synology, but snapshot replication is awesome. Snapshot replication allows you to pretty much take snapshots of your entire file system, point in time, and be able to restore from them while also having very little space overhead. It is incredibly efficient because it actually uses BTRFS's copy on write snapshot system where it can just easily restore all the data exactly how it is because the way BTRFS works is anytime you modify a file or a section of data, it doesn't actually overwrite that section of data with a new data. Instead, it just writes that new data to a new part on the disk and then says, okay, I'm now referencing this new data, but it doesn't delete the old data. Then all it has to do is keep a list of those snapshots and be able to reassemble your data instantly because instead of transferring files around, you're really just changing a mapping. So instead of having to move a bunch of massive files around on disk, you were just having to say, okay, those files are still on the disk. They're just here, 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 and here, instead of where they were originally. Then once the last snapshot that's referencing that data is removed, the data can then be deleted. But it just makes it incredibly efficient and is an awesome feature. So what snapshot replication allows you to do is really kind of dummy proof your NAS. I would highly recommend enabling snapshot replication because it allows you to super easily go through and have point in time replication of your files. That means if you screw up and delete a bunch of files or anything, you can go back in time and easily restore them. What I do with my clients, and it's obviously space dependent, as well as what they're using the NAS for, is I'll go through and have them have snapshots, pretty much one a day for the last 90 days. And that way, if they screw up and delete a file or anything like that, they'll be able to go back 90 days in the past. And pretty much the way you should think about this when it comes to how much space you're gonna be using, is it just takes an extra 90 days from the moment you delete a file to get that storage back. 
Now, if you're running a video editing server, this is gonna be very different because you're making tons of constant modifications. But for most users who aren't doing huge modifications to the same file over and over and over again, you should just think about it as a delete. Whenever you delete something, it'll take an extra 90 days to get that storage back. And for most people, that is totally worth it. So I've got a video on this as well. I will really recommend you set this up and just leave it and forget about it. Until that one day you realize, oh, my NAS got cryptoed. Oh, I corrupted this file. Oh, I wish I had this edit of this file two weeks ago. And then you can just go through and easily go and say, oh, hey, let's go back through that file and grab it and have an instant copy of it. The one thing to remember, this is not a backup. It is once again extra protection, but it doesn't help you if your drives fail or if your Synology crashes or anything like that. Please listen to number one, back up your files. Now on to seven, becoming a video server for your media. And this once again is not necessarily for everybody, but if you have a lot of DVD rips or anything like that, your Synology can actually share all this media to smart TVs, to phones, to laptops, to anything you want really easily. And there's predominantly two applications people use for this. Synology's own Video Station and Plex. So Video Station is integrated into DSM. You can just download it from the Package Center. And I'll be honest with you, it works, but it is not as flashy as Plex. It doesn't work as well. So what this allows you to do is you can easily go through and just appoint your media folder to it and be able to look at all the videos. So this is just a thumbnail uploaded in a video I've got. So I can just click on it and hit play and be able to watch it. All right, how's it going, So today we're going to be talking about the two new units are identical to the RF. Just like that. And if this was a DVD rip or anything like that and you've named it correctly, it'll actually go through and automatically find the thumbnail, the title, the actors, and everything like that. And Plex works very much the same way. And what these both can also do is use the CPU to on the fly re-encode the video to a new file format. And so that way you don't have to stream your 4K video at 4K to your phone across the country because you just would not have enough bandwidth. Your Synology can actually resample that down to 1080 or anything like that and send over a much smaller file size. The one thing to note, this is going to be tough on the NAS. And so you really need a NAS with a more powerful CPU and it's especially good if you have a NAS with Intel QuickSync or one of the Play versions, because those have dedicated engines within the CPU that are really good at video encoding. And so as I said earlier, you really have the option between Synology Video Station, which is Synology Zone obviously, and Plex. Plex is gonna be more flashy, it's going to work with more clients, it's going to be a little bit more polished, but Video Station is free, you get all the features for free, and you also have a much better experience within the Synology. That means it's going to be more optimized for the Synology hardware than Plex is going to be. Plus, you can also almost guarantee that Synology is not going to accidentally break Video Station for one of their NAS units. Now, Plex might push out an update that they just really didn't test with Synology, and so you might end up having a Plex version that just kind of breaks. And so it's really up to you. I'm probably gonna do a video kind of comparing the two, but try them both and see which one you like and which one works better for you. And so finally, number eight is going to be Surveillance Station. And this one is really just for people who want security cameras. Basically what Surveillance Station allows you to do is operate your Synology as an NVR, which is a network video recorder. So if you've got a bunch of IP security cameras, you can actually just hook them right up to your Synology and they can record directly to your Synology. It's got a lot of flashy features and this is the one service that is actually paid. So you get, I think, two licenses free for any NAS, and then if you've got one of the NVR NASs, I think you get five. But after that, you actually have to pay a lifetime fee for a security camera license. And the good news is those security camera licenses are actually transferable. So when you upgrade in 10 years to a new NAS, you can bring those with you, assuming you are upgrading and Synology has not changed the terms of service, but I would not expect them to do that but you never know. Anyway, this is a great option for people who want to just have one or two security cameras around the house and they don't wanna buy an entire solution that's gonna be clunky. Honestly, Security Station is incredibly polished and works really well. The only thing I note about it is H.265 videos, they don't work great in it because they don't have a browser plugin using H.265. 
But other than that, Synology Security Station has a ton of features that are awesome for home users who just want to set up a couple of cameras and be able to look back through them in case anything happens. Alright, All right, well that's going to be it for this. Go ahead and leave any other apps that you're using on your Synology that you really think other home users should be aware of in the comments below. And have a good one. Bye!